one other canonical form is product of sums canonical product of sums previously we have seen sum of products what is sum of products it is nothing but we have product terms to which we have applied the sum now what is product of sums we have sums to which i apply product so uh, let me take an example instead of using my hands uh, see a sum of a sum term which contains each of n variables as factors either in complemented or uncomplemented form is called max term here we use the term max term to represent the sum okay min term means to represent the product if the if the product contains all the variables either in uh, complemented or uncomplemented form that is called min term max term means it should contain all the variables which are present in the function in either complemented or uncomplemented form right if that is the case if that is the case then we can call it max term right for example if this is the function a b c it is a function a b c a max term will be a plus b prime plus c the reason is it is containing all the variables in either uh, you know uh, complemented form or uncomplemented form i have a doubt can i have the same variable two times in complemented and uncomplemented form you think about it if i write one more time plus a prime then what happens a plus a prime becomes 1 and that 1 plus everything becomes 1 therefore we cannot write it okay so every variable is going to occur exactly once not two times at least once at most once which means exactly once either in min term or max term remember every variable occur only once right and now this is called a max term so if you have any term like this a plus c this is not a max term because it is simply a sum term it is it can be called as sum term but then it is not a max term so max term means everything should be present if you have three variables all the three variables should be present in some form they should occur right a sum term which contains each of n variables as it is called max term so this is max term formula and next one is a max term gives a value of zero for exactly one combination of the variables now if you take this term this particular term for exactly one combination of the variables it will give zero previously min term exactly for one one combination of values it is giving one but here exactly for one combination of values it will give zero so what are the what is the combination of the values for which it will give zero zero one zero if you apply this combination to this it is zero plus zero plus zero only for this combination it is going to give you zero if you give any other combination it will not give zero it will give one for example if you apply 1 1 1 definitely it is one you give any other combination it is going to be one got it so that is the that is the specialty of this max term now we are going to define the function we are going to write the function in terms of max terms see min terms is nothing but saying when a function is going to be uh, one max terms is nothing but saying when a function is going to be zero so either you say when a function is going to be one that is nothing but defining the function and or you say when a function is going to be zero that is also a definition of function because we now know where to put zeros for the function or where to put ones for the function either you define zeros or you define ones automatically the remaining is going to be ones or zeros isn't it see in min terms what happened in, in canonical collection of uh, that uh, you know min terms what happened we are going to say what are the values of the uh, inputs for which the function is going to be ones that is enough you need not talk about all other combinations because all other combinations are obviously going to be zeros right similarly here here we are going to say what are all the combination of values for which uh, the you know the function is going to be zero that is enough why because all others are going to be one right either you can define the function in terms of where where the value is going to be one or where the value is going to be zero both are same so one uses min terms and other uses max terms now look at this the product of all max terms of f for which f assume zero which means wherever the function is taking zero you take the product of all those max terms right then that is called conjunct to normal form so i'll tell you this for this one where is the function taking zero here and here here and here for this four places the function is going to take zero then what is that you are supposed to do only for this four cases you find out the max terms what is max term 
you give the combination of the variables in such a way that for that variable for that assignment for that particular assignment the value should be zero right and now you put all of them in product so see this now what does it mean is for this one i have to form the max term what is max term what is the term which contains or which produces zero when i assign zero 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 if i assign zero 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 and if a plus b plus c some kind of term should produce zero then the term is a plus b plus c isn't it only the term a plus b plus c is going to produce a zero for the input combination zero 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 or if you didn't understand this directly the method is when you are writing the max term whenever there is zero you write the true form whenever there is one you write the complemented form that is how you could remember right now for this one what is the combination of a b and c or what how should you write the variables a b and c uh, for the value to be zero a b prime c prime if it has to be 0 1 1 if for the 0 1 1 the value has to be 0 you have to write it as a plus b prime plus c prime right and what about this one you have to write it as a plus b prime plus c isn't it why only for that oh this one a prime plus b plus c prime a prime plus b plus c prime for that combination you know this 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 min term is going to be zero now what is the min term for this a prime plus b prime plus c prime now you you product all of this now it is going to represent the function f how is it going to represent function f is we are going to say where the function f is going to be 0 now it is not that where the function f is 1 it is that we are defining the function f in terms of where is it going to be 0 now how does it work is you give any input for which the you know this one is 0 for which the function is 0 then if you give any input for example 0 0 0 to all of them at least one of them is going to be 0 which one the first one and when one of them is going to be 0 then obviously because of the product everything is going to be 0 that is how we have represented the value of f whenever it, it is going to be 0. So for any combination which produces a value 0 for the function will definitely produce a value 0 for one of the max terms exactly for 1 and now that 0 will produce the entire 0 got it. So we can define the function in two ways either canonical uh, sum of products or canonical product of sums. It is called as product of sums. The reason is we are using the product of sums. So what is the compact representation of this one is? Previously like you have used sigma to represent the sum, now you can use pi to represent the product, right? What are the values you have taken for 0, 3, 5, 7? For all these values, the value is going to be 0. That is how you represent the uh, canonical product of sums. So you now understood how to use both the canonical forms now we shall see given any expression how to convert it into the canonical forms okay